In this, the year 2024, Stellaris really does have a truly amazing amount of DLC to choose from. There are just so many different expansions, and many of which are somewhat divisive. Some people love them, some people hate them, but either way, there are so, so many to choose from. However, with the newest option, the Stellaris Astral Planes, I have never seen so many people come together with the same opinion, and it's a very, very negative one. So today, we're going to be checking out just what Astral Planes has to offer. We're going to be doing a full playthrough going through the the entire game and ripping the galaxy apart using the power of the different astral planes and hopefully we're gonna see and make our own opinion on the newest addition to the Stellaris collection. With all that said, let's have a quick look-see at the Empire I've chosen to do our first run into the new DLC. So first of all, of course, we have Riftworld, the brand new origin which is added within the DLC. A massive rift in space and time looms near this civilization's homeworld. After studying the phenomena for millennia, recent advances in starship technology will allow them to finally reach out and discover what secrets it might hold. So we instantly start off with an archaeology site, there's a rift in our home territory, and there's more chance for rifts to appear within our territory. We also so explore them faster and there's less chance for them to fail. So hopefully you'll get way more of those new stories, way more of those branching paths, and we can see exactly what the DLC has to offer. For the civics, we're also going with two of the brand new civics, Sovereign Guardianship, which is a whole lot of text there, and Dimensional Worship. With Dimensional Worship, it means we can build dimensional shrines around astral scars and wormholes, which will give us extra unity, essentially you build these on star bases. We also get more astral threads, which is the brand new resource which you get from astral rifts, and we have more chance of astral rifts to actually show up. In addition to all of that, our new counsellor, the Astral Minister, will allow our priests to provide small amounts of physics. At max level, it's two physics research per priest. It's not much, but I really love things like that, where you get extra resource with already existing jobs, so it's kind of aimed at people like me who just like to see bonuses. So with Sovereign Guardianship, it almost reminds me of Inward's Perfection, as it wants you to really protect your borders, but it's the military version. So you get more empire size from planets, branch offices, and systems, but less from populations and districts, essentially meaning you want really big worlds, but not many of them. So a very small empire, perhaps with vassals and controlling space that way, is really the way to go with that. In addition, the new council member from this is really powerful in my opinion, it gives all sorts of bonuses for your ships within your own own territory, which will definitely bolster your initial fleet power, making you seem a lot stronger than other empires. You can also activate an edict which sacrifices influence and increases your unity. How useful that will really be, because even small empires like influence, I don't really know, but I guess that's why we're testing this thing out. So we should be a very small, very powerful empire. Now as for our species, we are the Warp Spiders. We have Natural Physicists, Traditional, Enduring, and Quick Learners. I really want those counselors nice and high level quickly. I'm going to have loads of priests, and the priests will be producing physics. So that's exactly what we're going with there. Our ruler is a commander, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> Now, as for our difficulty, we're going with our usual settings, so we have the mid-game set to 200, so 2,250, we have the scaling difficulty set to mid-game, maximum difficulty, the end-game crisis can spawn in after 2,300, it's random, and max difficulty of times 25. Although, can't you go to 50 now somehow? Anyway, that's all of the settings we're going with, so hopefully... We're going to see some very strong empires, and hopefully some of the new civics being used by all of the other empires as well. Likely we're going to end this game by ripping apart the galaxy itself, because we've been meddling with the warp far too much. And now finally, into the game itself, and a very fitting backdrop there. And so the Warp Covenant begins near the very top of the galaxy. And of course, we are Riftworld. For as long as we can remember, the Great Rift has loomed in the skies above Charnel's Rest. Legends propose that our past is entwined with this mysterious celestial scar and an ancient impact site near our capital. For generations, the site was revered, but little understood. However, recent seismic activity has uncovered subsurface anomalies in the crater. Preparations are already underway, to drill into its core, opinions remain divided on what we may uncover. Is it a simple coincidence that this has occurred at the advent of hyperdrive technology? Just as we reach for the heavens, our attention is pulled back to the ground. Perhaps what lies beneath the surface of this world is meant to aid us on our journey to the stars. Perhaps it can prepare us for whatever lies beyond the rift. And of course, we have the actual archaeology site. 
So I'm mostly spoiler free for all this. I have completed this site and a bit of the first rift, and that's pretty much it. So let's, to begin with, let's just grab everything nearby. Let's have a look, see who our heir is. Our heir is another commando, and they have champion of the people. Well, not exactly the one I wanted, but that's fine. That's more like what I wanted, but you know what? You are going to be a lot easier to uh, skill up in the way I want you to. Gonna grab this high level scientist when I can, and ooh, there is the exact thing I want for governor. I really want politician as much as possible, because I want to power level some of our specific leaders. We're going into statecraft to begin with, for things like amongst peers. This way we can start leveling up all of our leaders based on the power of our edicts. Okay, so you're going to be swapped out for that as soon as possible. There we go. So this was really nerfed. I haven't actually played Stellaris for like a month, really. And the last time I played, the politician gave double what it gives now. It was 10% and then 20%. Now it's 5 and then 10 And I completely understand why. When I was doing some test builds, you could really level up things quickly. Ooh. Tempted to have this researcher lead our capital rather than you. I normally don't put a researcher here, but you know what? Yes. High Speed Crater. This is the very first event from the excavation site. Initial excavations into the base of the crater revealed a fully formed cylinder of impactite, impactite lodged deep into the earth. This vein must have originated from a meteoric impact of extremely high velocity. Initial calculations demonstrate the object must have arrived at nearly the speed of light. Underground Caverns. At the termination point of the impactite vein, we have discovered an expansive cave system. Pools of underground water support thin lines of pale vegetation along the cavern walls. At the bottom of one of these pools lies the remnants of an anomalous spherical object. It is not a natural formation, and appears to be the source of the impact site. And we're also now moving towards our very first world. Our home world, I am just going to try and fill with as many temples as possible. Because once we get our next leader from the dimensional worship, we're going to start getting some physics research from our priests. So, although this is mostly a unity build, of course later on we will need to pivot heavy into tech. This will ease the transition. We also need some more dimensional shrines as soon as we find some more of these lovely rifts. Which I now realise I've not even looked at. So there's a the rift in all of its magical glory, right next to our world. And because we have a rift, our starbase has a dimensional portal producing unity. It's also producing some astral threads, which if we take a look see at the astral actions at the moment, we can just use for physics research and all of these will unlock as time goes by. I basically got the first few to begin with, and they are interesting. I'm really curious to see what the more expensive ones are. We have recovered the sphere from the underground lake. While covered in vegetation, much of it remains fully intact. Its construction is a strange mix of highly sophisticated design and crude assembly. Perfectly smooth metallic plates cover the frontal position of the ship, which must have reduced friction significantly upon atmospheric entry. The trajectory of its resting site aligns with the vein of impactite, confirming that this sphere is the source of the metamorphic rock that led us here. Even more incredibly, there are signs that this vessel had passengers. May need to start reading these in shorthand later because they are getting very long-winded already. And it's going to get long, more long-winded from here. Um, I would love you to have Politician. If I grab Skirmisher, that will then force you to only have those two options. So for now, Champion of the People rank 2. At least that people are going to be very, very happy. Statecraft is finished, and although it's been nerfed, I am still going to go with Transcendent Learning because I do want more scientists. And now everyone gets a plus 25% experience gain. And with that, our normal commander is leveled up, Engineer Rank 2, and we have the Ancient Crater. This will be the last one I read in its entirety. From then on, I'm going to be shorthand reading it. We have recovered a cache of documents from within the ancient sphere, each written in an archaic version of our own language. Several of these mention names associated with our most sacred legends. An intricate network of ladders snakes towards the impact site to a massive tunnel system. Based on the varying ages of the rope fibres, these caverns must have been occupied for several generations as the crash survivors worked their way towards the surface. However, nothing we've discovered thus far could have prepared us for the final revelation. One of the upper chambers contained a burial site. DNA analysis conducted upon the remains within revealed a shocking truth. These people are our ancestors. 
Where exactly they came from or why this place was forgotten is yet unknown. The salvage documents are in a poorly preserved state, but we have recovered a data log from the sphere. It clearly shows that the vessel arrived in our star system by means of the astral rift near Chosen's Rest. With some study, we should be able to replicate and even improve upon this technology required to construct a vessel with these dimension-spanning capabilities. We have found our birthplace. And with that, we now have the option to grab Astral Rift Exploration. That's very expensive, so we'll grab that later, but that's gonna, going to allow us to go into the rift and start our first rift site. I completely forgot I called our leader Steve. Biggest Spider Steve. We're going to be leaving that. So we're finally setting up our choke points. We're going to be grabbing this just because I want all the points for it. But then I'm probably going to just destroy this star base and keep this. We're going to be grabbing this Gaia world and then grabbing this small area here. And we're also going to grab this chunk. So we have the Arid world and the Tundra world for later. And again, another archaeology site. And that'll probably be it unless we see something very very special we do have a ruined art installation there which is great things are looking okay remember we do have sovereign guardianship so we don't really want too many worlds we just want good worlds and a small easy to protect space now rift sphere technology has been developed which means we can now produce the sphere and we can enter the rift itself so with that Where's the one I wanted to send? There was one scientist in particular, not you. Probably should just check on the thing. You, you're the one. Okay, can you please stop doing that? You are going through the rift because you are level four and a scholar, and that means you have a faster rift exploration speed. Let's see what lies beyond the veil. The ruined planet. Our voyage into the rift has found this ruined world, pockmarked with burning craters and warships lying buried in the sands. The world is a battlefield. Through radio transmissions, we have realised their language is identical to the language of the sphere we found in Chosen's Rest. But sadly, it seems like that they are fighting an enemy simply known as the Invaders, and they are on the losing end of things. We are searching for the remaining survivors, our ancestors. There are two distinct ideological factions of the survivors who we now are almost certain are our living ancestors. There is the Starlight Vanguard, the Grim Militarists, and the Black Curtain, a priestly order. Now both of these fit our ethics, I don't know if you get other options depending on your ethics, but since we are fanatic spiritualist and dimensional worshippers, we're gonna go with the Black Curtain, we are going with the priestly order. Prophets Retreat, the holy world of a fallen empire. Ooh, I love that there. Abundant geothermal activity gives you extra generator districts and gives you research from technicians. We'll grab this in the future, but for now, we are going to also consecrate the world because our second ascension perk was consecrated worlds, and if you use that on a Gaia world, it's guaranteed to give you a holy world, which is the most powerful bonus. So that world alone is giving us plus 8% unity and plus 4% extra amenities. Now we need to consecrate some other worlds within our territory. So you, not good enough. Come on, at least get venerated. Good enough for now. So now we have the venerated and holy. We have 14% unity and plus 7% amenities. We'll then also make this tundra world our final holy world. We have opened dialogue with the spiritualist faction known as the Black Curtain. After seeing our language appearance and the presence of the Rift Sphere, they were quickly convinced of our common heritage and divulged our history. Long ago, our species within the Rift were confronted and almost exterminated by an extra-dimensional threat. Though on the eve of their defeat, an astral rift appeared. Through this miracle door, they sent the crude Rift Sphere, and this sadly only allowed for a single one-way journey. This is the item we found buried deep inside the ancient crater of Chosen's Rest. A group of refugees was prepped for the mission. These were our true ancestors. And more shockingly, it turns out that this happened mere 50 years ago within the Rift, because it turns out time does not change in the same way as in the material realm. For us, eons have passed, for them, hardly a generation. We have held a council with the Black Curtain, and they have seen our arrival at this critical moment as extra-dimensional fleets are being detected as an act of divine provenance. 
Your arrival is nothing less than a miracle. Long ago, we accepted that this war was hopeless. Our people are starving and our suffering is great. Children from beyond the door, lend us your charity in our last moments. Their plight is obvious, even if their fate is not. Feeding the people is within our means. We should be able to send limited supplies through the anchor cable, and our advanced agricultural techniques will surely prove useful. There is even a chance that we could shuttle some of their people to safety through the rift by infusing astral threads into the fuel of their spacecraft. It is a small chance, but one that may very least raise their spirits. Ooh. I'm going to go with... Okay, well, I couldn't do the food one anyway, but yeah, I was going to go with the astral thread one. Let's see if we can save some of their people. The end of the ruined planet Rift. Our ancestral fleets have successfully repelled the invaders. Wild celebrations have erupted all across the planet. The ancestral thread we provided for the battle proved to be useful to supplement the fleet's fuel supplies and boosted sublight performance. This experimental application can be used for our own armada. The World Council is declaring a planetary holiday in our name. The Warp Covenant Day will be celebrated for generations to come. We may choose one prominent figure from the society to bring back with us as an ambassador and historian. The rest of our ancestors shall remain and rebuild. So, I do have space for one more official, but I don't know if I necessarily want that too much, because I don't think I'm going to need another official. I think we should get a commander, and hopefully they'll have something good on them. Spirit of our ancestors. The discovery of our ancestors has invigorated our society. We are the progeny of an ancient civilization from which we have gleaned valuable knowledge and technological expertise. Our journey through the rift was a momentous one and will not be soon forgotten. We should be thankful for the opportunity afforded to us by our progenitors. Our very civilization is a testament to their will to survive. Our success will be a tribute to them. So permanently, we now have Spirit of the Ancestors giving us plus 5% to pop growth, habitability, Astral Rift exploration speed, minus 50% chance to fail an Astral Rift, and plus 5% sublight speed. Which is all pretty nice. Okay, our scientists are back, so let's send them to the next Astral Rift. So we do have a new leader then. There they are, the new commander. Ooh, they have Eye for Talent rank 2. And Rift Warped. Plus 50% leader lifespan, plus 10% leader experience gain does not count towards leader capacity. Oh, that's perfect then for the commander. I did not know that. Um, it's extra range, I guess. You're a bit of a mixed bag, aren't you? I guess for now, then, you're just going to command one of our fleets. Nice and simple. In this new rift, we found a tropical world with swollen pigmented molluscoids. Yeah, it's apparently a very pretty place and very kaleidoscopic. With big ol' slugs. Cons We've received an anomalous transmission from the Chosen Rest system. We see you, children of rifts. Our call led you to the vessel. Our hands opened the door. Your survival was necessary. Who are you? We walk the behind the rifts. An endless war, an endless foe. Your ancestors know them. You, children of plains, can help us. Muster Tune, we feel you every time you breach the plains. Soon we will know you and come to you. We are close. So I assume once I do enough of these rifts, that's going to progress. That's my guess with that one. Now we have the choice to either explore the gas, which we found just underneath the very surface of this world, which is likely coming from the planet's core, or we can examine the fauna, the fruit-laden trees and the giant slugs. So here's something though, so apparently it's an amber coloured gas and then it's asking us to sample the pink gas. I don't think amber is pink. A very small thing to notice, but as soon as I noticed it I literally had to reread it to make sure I wasn't reading things wrong because of dyslexia. Okay, I'm gonna go with examine the fauna. Funnily enough, this is actually the one I had last time. So this, this is the last thing I'm spoiled for. After this, I don't know what happens with all the later game events. I have done this one, though. Except I went with the gas option. So this time, we're going with the fauna. 
Oh, so nothing really to do with the fauna in this one, sadly, because it turns out the gas on this world is massively hallucinogenic, and our suits are not good enough to filter it. So because of that, our people wandered around pretty much aimlessly, loving all the plants, eating the fruit, and just being generally happy, but not really remembering most of it. Thankfully, our suits do have cameras, so at least we have some details that we can learn from. The filters in our suits were not enough to protect us from the gas. Luckily, some of us stumbled back into the shelter of the Rift Sphere, where we were able to recover our senses. Though it felt as if we'd only just left, we had been exploring for days. So we get a little bit of gas from that. Hopefully we do still learn about the fauna though, because I'm just really curious. An alien empire. We've found what we think is the source of some of this gas. Waves of the thick pink miasma emanated from it in irregular intervals. So this chasm, we can either use caution and excavate around the chasm, or we can explore the chasm directly. I'm going to explore around the chasm and try to be safe. And hopefully we can find a nice live bizarre creature. Okay, I am going to be expanding the Empire a little bit more than I originally wanted, purely because I really want this system to have this event. So, I'm going to be grabbing this chunk as well. So our choke points are going to be here, here, thankfully that didn't actually connect, which is great, and then here. So there's three choke points. And it's a decently small Empire. Still haven't found any neighbours yet, which is really weird. After retrofitting the Rift Sphere sample collection tool into an excavation tool, we began to dig away at the mouth of the chasm. After cutting through a thick layer of yellow mulch, we then discovered a new layer, ochre in colour. It broke into scale-like layers as we dug, releasing small bursts of the trapped gas, but not enough to be the source. After digging deeper, the harvesting tool pierced through a darker, more crimson-coloured soil layer. At this, the ground erupted violently. Thick clouds of pink gas poured through the gouge we have made. This darker earth then moved as if it were alive. Our harvesting tools were rapidly enveloped in scarlet earth and crushed to scrap. The surface around us shook increasingly with violent tremors, and we had to retreat to the upper atmosphere. We are no longer welcome here. As not really a shock to anyone who has been listening along, Yes, the world itself was very much alive. The planet was creating its own ecosystem, designed to continuously provide it with highly nutritious and submissive livestock. The soil was remarkably fertile, and explains the extreme density of the vegetation on the planet's surface. We've been able to apply some of these principles to our own farming methods. So we've just got gene crops for free, ta-da, and we also got some more astral threads. I can now build the astral siphon. Ooh, okay, so yeah, the Astral Siphon will produce Astral Threads, essentially it's a research building we can build on every single world. We can also increase our sublight speed and our jump charge time, and we can get some tech towards the Quantum Catapult. Ooh, I didn't see this one last time. Gain Hyper Relay Insight. Okay, so we can get some tech towards Hyper Relays, that's actually really nice and quite cheap. As soon as we have the Hyperlane Breach technology. Lovely. Our Astral Minister is now rank 5, which means our researchers, sorry, our priests, are now giving 2.5 research. I mean, it's not much, but it's a little bit. I do feel like my first impressions is this could be buffed a little bit. Some of the other council positions are far better, but of course it is also balanced against the actual Civic itself, which I'm still on the fence about how powerful it is, so... Yeah, I'm somewhere in the middle right now with this one. I think it's a fun one, but I don't know if it's a particularly powerful Civic. Then the other Civic, I think, is going to definitely show its uh, power level later, where normally your populations are the real problem with Empire size. Also, we can have some serious um, Bastions as well, because we can build the Specialist Starbase building, which is the Reloading Bay, which increases ship fire rate by 25%, which I believe also increases the Star Hold itself, and any defense structures you build. That's a lot. Okay, now I am making a bizarre choice here, a lot of you may be questioning. I have gone with Synthetic Evolution as our Ascension perk. Why would you do that, Latherix? You are fanatically spiritualist. Why would you go down the anti-spiritualist option? And it's because I want to use this as much as possible. So this is Synthetic Evolution, it's one of the Council agendas. All of the different Ascension versions, so Psychic, Genetic, and... Cyborg, along with Synthetic, will give you a version of this, which essentially allows you to go for the tech required. 
Synthetic requires the most, and these are always cheaper than the others. So as you can see, these will take 56 months, this one only takes 28, and that means we can use it over and over again, and it will still give the full experience as if any other agenda is finished. I really want to max out our leaders, and I think this will be a really fun way of doing that. Also, Spiritualist Robots is a very fun thing. It's goofy, and I like it. Oh, what were the odds of that? On Desiccated, we've lost one of our people. Hostile Wildlife. I don't think that's part of this particular event, though I might be wrong. I didn't think Desiccated had a um, death option. It's really annoying, because that was our head of research. It wasn't just a random researcher. I uh, don't really know what to do to replace you, honestly. You're already all specialised wrong, so I guess just... Probably extra lifespan. Oh, that is actually a major setback. Special. The tunnels are partially collapsed and currently not in use by the worms. However, the tunnels which aren't completely collapsed are covered in a web-like substance which keeps the gravel in place. Most of the chambers are empty, but some contain murky pools of water. Within one, we encounter a clutch of large, mineralized cocoons, half submerged in the liquid. We're gonna go harvest the eggs, because of course we are. Uh, so that changed pretty quickly. Situation normal. However, we have been eaten. <laughs> Whilst we were engaged in harvesting the eggs, one of the worms has engulfed us whole. Our rift sphere is currently encased in its digestive system. We don't know if this was an aggressive act or if the worm was simply grazing. The digestive juices secreted by the worm are mild, but we cannot remain indefinitely. By pulling anchor, we would force ourselves through the gap in the worm's mouth. Alternatively, the worm's insides appear relatively soft and should be susceptible to an explosion. Well, we don't actually have two options there, we have only one, so we're pulling the emergency anchor. I wonder why I couldn't do the other one. It's clearly alluding to, to uh, two options there. So something's going on with this empire, I just tried to make them a vassal, then they said no after saying they'd accept, but now they're going to accept, though admittedly they're not actually going to give us anything. Sure. This way they'll build up loads of extra trust, and next time I can actually start getting stuff off of them. I don't know what happened to their army, I need to find out, because they were equal to us, and I didn't build any more army. Then suddenly they lost everything without being at war. Oh, did you... You know what, there should be another two. I think they ran their fleets into this. Yeah, look, it's damaged. They ran their fleet into this event where all the asteroids wake up, and they lost it. There's also some space amoeba just chilling, but I'm assuming they're friends with them. Yeah, they've uh, befriended them. Well, at least we know what happened to them. Complete. And now we have a vassal, which is putting us in a much better position. So I'm thinking, yeah, vassal here, eventually form a federation with the commonality, because they are ridiculously strong, and maybe try and vassalize the consciousness later. That's what I'm thinking. I wasn't going to grab this originally, but we're going to be a bit silly. So we're grabbing Imperial Prerogative. This will decrease the Empire size from planets by 50%. Remember that our Civic increases it by 100%, so really trying to fight it, I think it's best to have less worlds. But we have the unique opportunity to grab all of these Tomb Worlds, because now we have access to a Survivor species, which like Tomb Worlds. And I love the idea of having all six of these under our control, so we desperately needed that. I don't think I'm playing this Civic massively well, but I still think even with all these worlds, it's still better in the very, very light game when they're all completely full to capacity to have them. I think. I hope. Maybe. Okay, so I no longer need as much influence. I'm finally going to activate Inner Focus. This is what comes from Sovereign Guardianship. This will decrease our influence by 3 per month, but increase our unity by 10%. We've grabbed Ascensionist as our third Civic. This will allow us to make our world smaller in the eyes of the Empire size. It also makes all the Ascensions a lot cheaper and more effective in terms of everything else. So right now we've ascended our homeworld to rank 2, which increases the stability, amenities and resources overall. We can now do that a bit more. We've also grabbed Harmony, which further increases planetary Ascension effects. You can see where we're going with this. Well, I've encountered a bug. We are trying to build robots, and we have allowed robot workers. However, what's happening is it's got two growth, but no robot being built. 
I don't know what's going on there, so I'm going to quickly restart the game. I'm really nervous about this, so I've restarted the game a few times, I've double-checked everything. There's no reason why I shouldn't be allowed to build robots right now. Hence why I can actually build the building and everything else. It's just not making them. So, my issue is, when I become synths, is this bug going to persist and also affect our synthetic populations? It shouldn't, because the synths are going to replace the original species, so they're going to be classed as something different. This is going to be... odd. Okay, so we find ourselves inside of an enormous mesh. Energy crackles rhythmically along its grid-like walls. A concentrated cloud of dark matter is suspended deep within the tangled web. Translucent tendrils probe outwards against the energy barrier, sparking on contact before recoiling back. The ghostly particles move as if patterned. Whatever this spectral mass may be, it has not reacted to our presence. Examine the mesh or approach the dark matter. Let's approach the dark matter. Let's try and make a friend. We sense no malicious intent, even though it's currently probing our minds and our histories. The entity stirred and a message appeared in our minds. I have never encountered your kind before. What are you? We are explorers from another world. My kind makes up the building blocks of reality. We are also wanderers and explorers who take great interests in experiencing the universe. Regrettably, another life form saw us as a mere material deposit, a passing fuel source to be captured and harvested. I wish to inhabit the body of your scientist. Doing so would free me from this prison. If you allow me to possess this vessel, I will use my depth of knowledge and psychic powers to carry out your people's will for eternity. Unfortunately, I'm not sure their mind is powerful enough to coexist with my consciousness. Yes! <laughs> Sorry, scientist. We're getting the big space blob. El Mano was bound to a diagnostic bench, and the transfer began. They writhed with discomfort, spasming uncontrollably as the foreign consciousness oof, overwhelmed their mind. The ghostly entity became a churning vortex of unstable energy. Suddenly, everything went quiet, and El Mano rose with a new demeanor. Now fully inert, the spectral mass diffused evenly throughout the mesh. Removes all traits from El Mano. Skill set to five actually weakens them slightly, but there we go. We have a, uh, a new scientist. Yay. What do you like? Oh. Oh, you are better. Riftwalker. Foreign consciousness, increasing rift exploration skill and speed. Along with even... Oh, that is even more speed and they're psychic. Oh my god, they are the best. Okay, never mind. That was so worth it. It's unbelievable. To, to the next rift, straight away, please. That is fantastic. Oh! We can now phase our fleet. It's also missing two because we need different techs. Unlocks the phase fleet, fleet action, which allows your fleet to phase out of existence safe in a different dimension for 180 days. The fleet returns fully repaired. This action can only be used once and then adds new functionality. Okay, so this action is in the astral action. Cool. Definitely something we'll have to unlock later. Okay, for our new glorious leader. I wonder if they're immortal as well. Doesn't seem like it. Just a uh, resilient. We have found a windswept planet. We could either go into the caverns or incredibly high up. Either of these should allow us to avoid some of this wind. I think above the storms we can look down upon it. 40% straight away. Yeah, so this leader is the best rift walker you could possibly get. Got it. System survey complete. Where's our builder? I'm sure he was just around it. There you are. I knew I moved you into the right place. Breaking through the cloud layer, we observed a piercing blue sky. Wind continued to whip against our hull, gaining strength with every gust. More than just a peculiar weather pattern, these currents act with unnatural precision. What's more, we detected a hormone-like compound in the swirling air. Subsequent analysis revealed it is strikingly similar to a biological response from a plant under attack. Once again, I think we have a new living world. I always love those in sci-fi, so happy to see another one already. 
We found microorganisms within the wind. When working together, these act as a single mind and can generate living gusts of wind. We found this out by releasing a hormone, which then instantly died down the winds themselves. Some of these currents carry hair-like strands of genetic material caught in the same current. We were pushed back towards the surface, where the storm had now subsided. There is a battle raging on on this world between the microorganisms in the air and a type of fungus who are eating any of the microorganisms and their children who try to land to mature. So because of this, the microorganisms in the air are battering the land, forcing the fungus into cavities and caves, which I'm sure we would have found out if we went the other way. So now we have two options. Find a way to remove the fungus or investigate the fungus. I'm thinking... The microorganisms are acting as a single mind, they're acting to defend their children, they're clearly more sentient, but we don't really know about the fungus, actually, now I'm saying that. I'm going to remove the fungus, because I want to side with one of them and try and get as much as I can out of them. So let's side with that. We'll lose a few alloys, and we're moving forward. Oh, we are completely full on astral threads at the moment. Let's grab that. The siphon. So the siphon is a building which will produce threads, but also research, and now we can start to upgrade them once we've built some of them. I think I built one recently? No, did I just think about it? I thought about building one, and it's the thought which counts. A strange object has arrived in the orbit of Chosen's Rest, a crystalline sphere reminiscent of our own Rift Sphere technology. It appeared without warning along no known trajectory. At such close proximity to Chosen's Rest, the sphere may represent a significant danger to our people. On the other hand, it is also likely to contain valuable insights to the nature of dimensional travel. Or valuable, if I can pronounce that. Okay, study it. We're gonna study it. Um, Astral Thread seems to... Okay, so if we do that, we actually get more research. It just costs Astral Threads. Which we do have a lot of, right? Yeah, let's go with that then. Increases the speed and also increases our, our research. This is the last of the Astral Tears we can produce. All four of four have now been used. We arrived in the atmosphere of a frozen, mountainous world. Almost immediately, we were shaken by a powerful mental communication. Greetings! You have travelled far. From the depths of my meditation, I sensed your journey across the astral planes. Come, let us meet. Perhaps your arrival is the breakthrough I've been waiting for. A vision of an isolated mountain cave was revealed to us. To detect our presence so soon and to broadcast a message from such a distance implies this mysterious stranger possesses incredible psychic powers. A masked figure sat meditating in an isolated cave. Grey-skinned and humanoid, she was enveloped in a violet aura of gently pulsating energy. Glowing horns sprouted from the alien's head with similar, though stunted, spurs extending from her back. We are not familiar with the species, but they must be highly attuned to psionic wavelengths. They once again spoke within our minds. Thank you for accepting my invitation. We have much to discuss. I am known as a farseer. I have been meditating on these frozen wastes for years, awaiting revelation. It is not by chance alone that you have appeared here. Indeed, I clicked and everything. The farseer continued. I have been channeling my efforts to enter a spiritual dimension. Your people refer to this place as the Shroud. Recently, I felt a strange call that I believe has come from the deep within the Shroud. I now stand upon the threshold of this mysterious world for the first time. Oh, I wonder if we were psionic, if we could help more then. The Farseer sighed. My people have entrusted me with this responsibility, entering the Shroud. Oh, she's a Zroni, isn't she? A Zron, a Zroni? The ones which, you know, make Zro, the resource. I just realised the shape of the head. That might be the case then, because I remember some of the, the artwork on the archaeology site. The archaeology sites for that. My people have entrusted me with this, with this responsibility. Entering the Shroud may indeed grant us great power, but I am full of doubt. The closer I come, the more the Shroud pulls at me. There are whispers in the dark corners of my mind. Can such power truly be controlled? And now, at the moment of choice, you appear. This cannot be coincidence. We can only offer our perspective. I think it is. After following the instructions of the Crystal Sphere, a brand new rift has arrived. With a really creepy noise. Yep, that looks majorly different to the other rifts. 
Meanwhile, back at the uh, Sonic Stranger. We share details of our own relationship with the Divine. The search for enlightenment is why we explore, to find meaning beyond ourselves and to deepen our connection with the universe. The Farseer responded. You are much like us in that respect. The Zroni called it. Long to transcend the material world. So what right do I have to deny my people their ascension? As fellow seekers, how do you suggest we proceed? Encourage the far seeker to breach the shroud. Ooh, you know these Zroni don't end happily, right? You, you know that, yeah? You, you know that, right? Oh, is that it? Oh, I've got oh, I've got the wrong scientist in there. There's the correct. Well, actually, that's kind of worked out for the best because now I can send the good scientist, the one currently possessed, to go through the more extreme one in our home system. I was wondering why that was taking so long. I thought it was just a high level one. Apparently, no. It's just a matter of a uh, wrong scientist. <laughs> this one I'll read word for word because I believe this is likely going to be the end of our origin story. Understanding. The report received from our Rift Sphere contains no record of our scientists' biological signature. Something on the far side of the Rift has taken hold of the Sphere and disabled our attraction device. The first parcels of data we received were unintelligible, but subsequent transfers are slowly piecing these messages together. We speculate the flow of time is much faster on the other side of the Rift, and we are in fact receiving communication in real time from across the breach. The result of the processing of approximately one word per day, the following report is what we have received so far. We observe. Apology, method unkind. Emergency, understand. These brief messages are hidden amongst heavy noise and incomprehensible data. Who knows what danger the crew of the Rift Sphere is in. It may be possible to re-establish contact and regain control by sending an electromagnetic pulse through the anchor cord in an effort to reset our control systems. I'm going to assume big old crystal boy here is our bestest friend ever and we should do nothing to hurt them. So we should... Ah, oh, but saying that... I also really don't want to lose that scientist. Utilise AI to check for hidden patterns. Or EMP the anchor cord. I'm going to risk my people for the thing. Fine, we'll go with the easier option, which I think is the worst one. The spirits have granted us new wisdom. The next two words we were able to decode were home and witness. Amazingly, as our understanding of the alien data improves, we also discovered the existence of visual data embedded within the noise. A projection of our galaxy could be pieced together from the images, along with a second image of a much smaller yet unusually dense system. Between the two, there stretched a series of astral rifts. We understood that this was a roadmap from our current dimension to somewhere else. A small point of light was abnormally highlighted inside the image of our galaxy. Lighter analysis confirmed this was our homeworld, Chosen's Rest, shining brightly. A similar light was discovered to be marked in the neighbouring universe. They are showing us where to go. We're receiving more data than our computers can reasonably handle before it becomes corrupted or lost. We should prioritise the type of information we'd like to preserve. Uh, don't really mind either of these. I'll just go with the more difficult one because I assume it'll give me more stuff, but either tech is good. More images. A chronicle of this alien homeworld was shown to us in great detail. These beings formed millennia ago by a chance combination of gases and energy that accumulated nearby a massive astral rift. They flow freely in and out of the planet as if they were part of its atmosphere. At the end of each life cycle, their essence disperses back into the planet and gets born anew. Cities in the sky rose, fell, and rose again. Civilians, sorry, civilizations formed on top of previous civilizations with the knowledge physically maintained by these astral particles. The degree of time passing was safely estimated to be magnitudes greater than the history of our known universe. In the end, we behold a civilization of awakened higher beings. Their physiology alone is more advanced than any technology we could conceive. We have logged this new species in our database as the formless flourishing. Once again, we, we are receiving more data than our computers can reasonably handle before it becomes corrupted or lost. We should prioritise which one. I would like more physics research, please. 
Their gaseous homeworld was revealed to us in more and more detail. This time, we see its individual inhabitants. Beings of light, gas, and astral material leaked from the nearby rift are living in what could easily be described as a utopia. Eventually, a great structure was raised. An incredible piece of engineering, it stretched directly from their planet into the rift, allowing them to easily travel between this dimension and countless others. With such an astral conduit existing for so long between the planes, they have shaped many rifts to fit their specific needs. Their society stretched between a multitude of dimensions, colonizing entire universes as we would new planets. However, their greatest achievement was also their greatest disaster. Their empire spread further than the astral conduit could maintain. Brighter and brighter, the megastructure grew until the sight of it was difficult to look upon without shielding one's eyes. Until it eventually burst, violently in a dimension-spanning explosion, fracturing their civilization. Shattered kin. War. Help us. Our rift sphere has been forcibly ejected from the rift. A dimensional portal is now opening in the system. Are they going to be the unbidden? Is that what this is? Because they fight each other for material to consume and space and everything else. I can't seal it, I don't have the wormhole tech, but okay, I've opened the doorway apparently. Strange wormhole. An anomalous wormhole has, op has appeared nearby the Crystal Rift. We can only assume that it is the gateway opened by the formless to bring them aid. We detect the system on the other side has been pulled into our dimension from somewhere else. We should prepare our strongest fleets if we choose to enter this place. Okay, so we do have time to actually enter it. Good, good, good. I don't have the tech yet for it, but as soon as I do, I'm just going to rush straight through. Okay, so the Farsi is talking to us again. And they've sent a smooth capsule over. Thank you, uh, whatever the name was, of the Warp Covenant, for your fated visitation. We have not only breached the Shroud, but the Zroni population have begun to migrate into the Shroud permanently. It has provided us with such incredible power and harmony. We are experiencing a societal utopia like the which we could have never imagined. We wanted to share some of our material riches with you before we departed the physical world entirely. Safeguards from the negative effects of space storms, that's cool. Research speed for particles plus 10%, energy credits, threads, and crystals. Very nice. Now, as for the actual gameplay, since I know I'm focusing mostly on the rifts right now, we're actually doing okay. Pretty much all of our neighbors are equal to... Okay, ex except for you. You're very strong. Most of them are pretty equal to us with the odd superior here and there. We formed a defensive pact with the League over here, which means things just aren't attacking us. The Berserkers have actually been destroyed by the Commonwealth and a few of the other forces over here. We are trying to get the Commonwealth to become our next vassal. We've already befriended them, and they're currently constantly going to war, and as you can see, it's causing problems for them. We are friends with this other empire who are attacking our neighbours. So we're actually just incredibly peaceful. We are finally putting down the star bases to completely block off all these choke points and just bunkering down. Hopefully we'll have enough time to do some mega structures or something else before the endgame crisis. If not, maybe we'll become the endgame crisis. But for now, we are also Defender of the Galaxy, which is helping out everyone just love us. It's just been a really peaceful, pleasant experience and not much to talk about, which I'll have to mention at the start of the video because some people won't want to watch that, or at least w might want to skip to near the end of the game so it isn't just me talking about all the different events. What? Oh my god, what happened to your fleet? I probably should just accept this. They won't be giving me anything, but yeah, let's just get them as our vassal for now, and then later on we'll change it, because also it's free to accept. They were superior to us, and then our side, then... What did you do? Did you lose to one of these, or...? You've lost a fleet. I wonder what happened. I mean, our fleets are really starting to ramp up now, don't get me wrong. We have way over 100k fleet power, but still... We are now at the point where the AI is getting all of its cheats. It's getting all of its bonuses and everything else. There's no reason they should be falling behind. Most of them aren't. Like I said, most of them are superior to us still, or at least equivalent. No idea what happened to you. Still, once we're able to take stuff from you, you're going to be able to feed us so much. Our power level is going to spike in like 60 months. Okay, sending in a science ship so we can go there and instantly run away. Let's see what's there. Yep, that is definitely unbidden. 
or what are the other two called? Aberrant and I can't remember the third one's name, the green one. No, is it the green one? Yeah, I think this is an aberrant, right? The orange? Either way, the other side of the wormhole seems to have taken us to the center of the galaxy. It should not be possible for us to exist here, let alone an entire system. Is there perhaps some dimensional manipulation at play? We have little time to investigate, as we are receiving transmissions from an unknown entity. Oh, you've been upgraded! Look at you! What is this? What fools have you brought to aid you, Shadagon? Or perhaps you have offered us food? Have we been lured here as prey? I mean, we should be able to be- no, what type of weapons we're we using right now, that's a big deal. Because if they are just unbidden... Yeah, lasers are awful, so no, I need to change the vehicles up a bit, then I'll enter their territory. I'm not going to go with lasers, because we'll be destroyed. We need shields and kinetic weaponry. Now our power level is finally spiking, so we're, in, we are just about to hit 7,000 tech, which has gone up dramatically very quickly. Our empire size is still fairly small, our leaders are very good levels, so we have two with Grey Eminence, which is reducing empire size effect by 10% each. And then we have extra research, more uh, military build speed and experience gain. Basically, our ships are built veterans straight away, that's just how good these two military overseers are. One of them looking a bit different to the other one. Our robots are currently in the process of being upgraded, so soon they're going to have all of their stats. We're going to make them... Da -da -da. We're going to make them efficient processors, so plus 5% to all resources, extra resources from research, and being built faster but more expensive. Our main species on our world, which I really should put as full citizenship, but there we go, is a Psyker. A Psyker with Survivor, so all of our cold worlds will be inhabited by these glorious people along with our tomb worlds. We have Psykers and machines working together. Unity at last! Ignore the fact I've just now started become the Crisis. We will enlighten everyone, as we have seen the Zroni be enlightened. Okay, I think it's about time we finally attack the, spirits have the Unbidden. Which is weird to say, long before the actual crisis, I have to admit. Heretic fleet engaged. So, we are going to be doing very little damage to their shields, which is most of their health, but we sh we just have overwhelming firepower, so I'm hoping that one of our fleets. can make up the for it. Have granted us new wisdom. Actually, one thing I should have checked. Can we do... Oh, we can. I could have done this as well. This won't really help out, will it? Nope, just extra tech stuff. We can just jump out if things are looking particularly bad and come back. We've done damage, we can recover. They probably can't, I imagine. No, it looks like we're winning. The messengers. Our fleets have defeated the strange ships guarding the rift, but it seems they were not alone. We have received a transmission from beings inhabiting a structure nearby, so I guess in this one, nearby the lone planet in the system. Oh yeah, Yoss. I thought all these were planets, but actually, you know, they're crystal asteroids. More are coming. We must seal this rift. We are all the rem- Ooh, a purple one. Fancy. So that's activated the seal. Under assault from an unknown force, the entities currently inhabiting the center of the galaxy have requested our assistance. Should they fail, we know not our fate. Oh, look at that. Okay, we're going to do weave fabric. That'll cost us some astral threads and increases our shields while we're there, which is great. And then if we talk to them... We can actually give them a hundred of this. Oh! We can make them make fleets. Okay, I'm actually sending some scientists in to um, look at it all properly, so... Interesting. Now we really need to change our ships then to be anti-them. Just desperately. We won fine, but I want to I wanna win more. So I've done that twice, and that seems like all we can do. So I guess we'll just um, yeah, have our fleets on standby. We can always jump in if needed, right next to the wormhole. Good luck. 
Okay, the next enemies are arriving, also. We're about to unlock this, because we're about to get psionic theory, but I also didn't notice this. Dimensional lock allows your sign ship to place a dimensional lock on a wormhole, L gate, or shroud tunnel. Once locked, only those fleets with your permission may enter. Our sign ship is beset by enemies. That's fine, we don't really have much use for them anyway. Really, this is actually a benefit. Less cost for our scientist, and also... Complete. We get a bonus for a while from their death. Complete. This should go fine, since we already have fleets we've gave them, and then we're just going to run in and help. Heretic fleet engaged. I was just retrofitting to go full shields, at least. So, at least they're also ineffective against us. It's just loads of ineffective people fighting each other. And beautiful. Lovely. And now we can do this. What is it? Summon a powerful fleet from a place and time unknown. They can remain in that dimension for up to ten years. Okay, then. Okay, all of you get back. I do want to build a station here so we can start retrofitting here. So, as fast as you can, please get your butt over here and make a star base. Is that the fleet? Yes, it is. Oh, it's our own little unbidden! Yes, they're even using the proper weapons! Oh, I didn't know you had point defense. Did unbidden always have point defense? I cannot remember that one. Either way! Oh, that's so cute. We have our own little unbidden fleet. How sweet. I wonder if it scales with our strength. I hope it does. So, this is really cheesy, and I'm sad about doing this, but I'm doing it anyway to show it. So, because we're in this system, we're getting the huge bonus to our shields. And with all the other bonuses to our shields, you know, like the astral shielding, our fleet power skyrocketed to the point where our neighbour, who really isn't very far off us, was too weak and submitted to us. The northern hemisphere of the galaxy. Isn't that the, normal, the northern hemisphere of the galaxy? Yep, that makes sense. The top of the galaxy, anyway, from our perspective, is now under our rule. Well, after fighting off multiple 150k waves, we now have this, a legendary paragon. In a constant state of flux, this entity's visible form shifts between this reality and another. Their voice resonates at a harmonic multitude, as speaking on behalf of several beings at once. It is done. The seal is set. Never shall our children find this place again. They're psychic. They have Space Bender, which is a massive jump increase, along with a few astral threads for three, for free rather. Commanding Presence, which is great. Energy Weapon Specialist. Okay, well, we're going to have to focus on energy weapons then. Okay, yeah, so if we go with energy weapons, that'll be fine for any endgame crisis if we hit that, because... We get the Tachyon Lances against the Scourge, and then Archimitters for the Contingency and the Unbidden. That's fine. Scout and Celebrity. <laughs> Who are you? You know us. We are beyond the Rifts, and of the Rifts, you have seen us. Why are you here? Our children, broken children, hunt us. They seek the throne. We hide it. What is the throne? Our eternity, our memories... If we are the blood, it is the heart. Safe now. We thank you. Ooh. Chance the Formus becomes a subject under Warp Covenant as a lumin Luminarium. That's just the, uh... You guys, right? No, that's just... 23% chance the Warp Covenant changes to hostile. I mean, we'd destroy it. It's nowhere near strong enough to defend against us. Oh, I don't know. I rather like this guy. Um, He's actually... He'd be a really good leader. But we could just crush them. I mean... Ooh. I don't know. I really want the relic. Yes! Okay, this was predicted. We will serve you. This is our fate. Relic found, the Eternal Throne. Warp Covenant changes hostility to friendly. The Formless become the new owner of the Rift Station. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Formless becomes a subject under the Warp Covenant. Pledged Allegiance. So it is actually a relic then, I was right, the throne, yeah? Uh, let's have a look-see. Please, discovery. Relics. Ooh. Passive effects! All leaders are immortal. That'd be good if it wasn't already robots. Oh, that's... I mean, that's nice. Y yeah, it's better than the cryo-core. 
it gives us 333%, <laughs> sorry, plus 333% to our monthly Astral Thread, so at least that means we can do all of the Edicts. Cool, so then we also have you. Those are climate. Okay. Well, they hate us right now. We'll figure out a way to make them like us. I guess when I finish off Discovery, what I can do is... The one which allows us to um, befriend everyone. Oh, actually, what we could do... Instead of the Ascension perk, remove Ascensionists. Even though I really like Ascensionists. And go with Feudal Society. This gives one subject exempt from divided patronage. And then we also get the Ascension perk, I guess. I forgot that was nerfed as well. I don't mind you being upset with me, but I would like you... Okay, you're never going to be happy. I'd like you two to be loyal, and I'd love you to be loyal, because I don't know how much you can actually give us. Like, I don't know what this is. I can demand 75% of everything from this. Interesting. Maybe it doesn't matter if you do like us or not, then. The spirits have granted us new wisdom. Oh, I've got another achievement. Great. Let me just check what that actually was. My name is Ozymandias. The ones I got earlier as well was uh, Growing Blinds. Explore five rifts, and I got the first one breaching a single rift the first time I tested everything out. Cool. Remember when I said this wasn't a particularly good vassal, or at least doesn't look like it? I was just looking at my repeatables, and I was just being amazed. I have no stored research. How am I doing this in only four months? I was doing it like eight, nine months before, which, by the way, isn't too bad. Again, it doesn't look like we have that much. But bear in mind, we have a very small empire. An empire size of 365 is already very small, but then we're also affecting it with loads of other negatives. It's hardly affecting us at all. So I was already doing loads of tech. There's a minus 50% cost for our physics because we have these fellas. They make our repeatables for physics cost half. So yes, we are very much sticking with energy weapons. A small astral scar has appeared in our territory and actually another one did earlier as well, which I forgot about, which I'm now going to use as a full rift. Hopefully the other one will transform soon as well. Yeah, sure, I'll befriend everyone. I just want to make sure everyone likes us. I don't want to go to war with everyone too early. Again, I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to... Wait, no, no, bad. You're going to be a defender. I'm still not entirely sure if I'm going to try and end the galaxy or just fight the endgame crisis. I'm so torn between the two. I'm also building my first mega structure while repairing the first, that's why it's taking so long, but once it's finished, I'll instantly have access to things like the Ring Worlds and the Dyson Spheres and all that other lovely stuff. We've entered the abandoned complex. The surfaces in this room are coated in a thick layer of dust, indicating it has not been used for some time. We can detect no researchers, living or otherwise, whoever the caretakers were. They have long since gone. Heavy duty shelves line the walls, each holding one large egg. Most of them are in various states of decay, but a few living specimens remain. At the centre of this chamber rests an, ancient, sorry, an open container filled with a pale, viscous fluid. An analysis of the liquid, so fluid, reveals that it contains high amounts of proteins and amino acids. Judging by the residue left on some of the eggs, we speculate the fluid was being injected by the researchers. I'm gonna open an egg, because that seems smart. The embryo inside the egg is sick and coated in parasites. The parasites are warping around, including warping inside the poor embryo. It seems like this is the healthiest one, so I'm going to inject the liquid into the egg. Let's see if that helps. I'm not going to just put them down just yet. We're getting so many re uh, repeatables done, it is beautiful. Injecting the pale liquid has into the exposed embryo has produced some interesting results. In spite of the quantum parasites, the previously lethargic specimen has become reinvigorated. In fact, we may have miscalculated the dose. In a very short period of time, a more developed creature began pushing at the walls of the egg, one covered in a lattice of overlapping armoured plates and spines. Bit scary. However, the parasites were also stimulated. As they energetically teleport in and out of the embryo, the creature's tissue is being damaged. Okay, inject the astral thread. Let's see if we can protect it. 
The experiment was a success. The astral thread we've injected into the embryo has stabilized the quantum parasites. See, my dyslexic brain keeps seeing this as aquatic parasites, and I have had to redo this take like 10 times, because even though I know it's wrong, I keep seeing it and reading it wrong. You have no idea how many outtakes this playthrough has had so far. The fully developed hatchling has emerged intact. It is incredibly obedient and was quick to learn the most basic commands. Based on that, as well as its thick armoured hide and poisonous spines, we speculate that these creatures were being bred for war. Startlingly, it has demonstrated the ability to warp small distances. The astral thread seems to have woven a unique symbiotic relationship between the creature and the parasites. We may have created something entirely too dangerous. We're bringing back more. You can now build a new assault army, Warplings. Interesting. Wonder how strong they are. Oh yeah, I can just go to a planet and make one that can actually see its stats. Warp- whoa. That's... Really, really good. Okay, so a robotic assault army does 1.8 to 3.7 damage. This does 9 to 18. And then the morale is just off the scale. Collateral damage is also incredibly low. And it's not affected by morale damage. You know what? Then I'll just... Let's make some warplings. I guess the idea is that they do cost um, thread, so I can't do other stuff as much as I make them. But still, uh, the gain of physics insight still on cooldown. The rest I don't really care about right now. So, sure, we'll just go with that for now. We desperately need some more crisis points. Almost all of our points so far have came from just owning vassals, so what we're going to do is start attacking the Fallen Empires. The endgame crisis should be able to spawn in any time from next year, but if it takes too long, let's say it takes 30-40 years, we can simply end the galaxy ourselves, going into total war, and then obliterating everything. I mean, it makes sense, tearing the galaxy apart using rifts and the warp, considering what the we've been doing. We're finally sending out the fleet to attack the Watchers. This will be the first of the Fallen Empires we attack, and we're going straight after its capital. So the goal, really, is what we're going to do is we're going to go to war to... Oh, I can't bring them into the fold. I thought we'd be able to do that, but apparently not, I guess, just because what they are. If we do wipe them out, I still think we lose the system, though. So I guess for now, we'll just do claim, and then we'll wipe them out in a later war. We have the Ancients, who will be the target afterwards. You're all open. Fantastic. Soon, I believe, the Republic is going to fall as one of our vassals as well, which will give us more points. Again, I'm just trying to get as many Crisis points as possible at this point, because we want Galactic Nemesis giving us the plus 50% to our ship's weapon damage, and then eventually, Existential Threat. So I've set my battleships all with Archimitters and with Strikecraft and with Disruptors. Essentially, we're ignoring shields and armor because Fallen Empires really rely on those, especially over things like Hull. So if we can have enough damage there, things are great. So we should just get straight to that. Yep, there's their hull points, and it's gone! In fact, some of the defense structures are still completely intact because of how we deal damage. Okay, we do have quite a few ground forces, so we should be able to land straight on, on one of the worlds, but not really enough for both. Why is my main fleet just hanging back? Transport fleet, please get over here, that'd be great. We have some warp spiders mixed in with the new one, or warp beasts, whatever they're called. Bring in bombardment of the temple and the celestial throne. Where are their fleets? I know they've been fighting some other empire. Yeah, their fleets are majorly out of position because they're currently fighting the robots. Oh. That's actually kind of awful for us because that means less points for us crisis-wise, but at least it means a quick war, then we'll just run on over straight away to the ancients then. I finally got Ascension Theory, so with that we now have Galactic Wonders and we have all the extra Edicts as well. So let's start building ourselves a Dyson Sphere. We're building Dyson Sphere here, we're still building the Coordination Center. Ooh, should I stop doing that actually? We could build ourselves a Matter Decompressor instead. Just go for sheer resources to keep everything running no matter what I do with our worlds. Though I would also like a Ring World. I'm a little bit behind on everything I want to do and it is a little bit annoying. I kind of want all of- you know what, yeah, let's not build the Coordination Center, let's move here, and let's start building our ring world once I get the tech. I thought I had the tech... I will get the tech soon. So Dyson Sphere, and that. We're also building the Science Nexus. Good. Okay, everything is fine. 
We have way too many Corvettes. I'll start disbanding them after we attack both Fallen Empires. We're going to go into Battleship Spam because that's what makes me happy. Turns out Warplings really just devastate things. Even the Fallen Empire defenses are just nothing compared with these. Our champions have secured a heathen planet. I mean, that's all I really wanted to do, so status quo for now. I'll return later to remove the rest of you, alright? So just sit tight, don't worry. Latherix has not forgot you. Oh, you're under attack from the Fallen Empire. That's actually really irritating, because if I'm in this system when war breaks out, I think I might get bounced out. So, run to there anyway. Then jump over there, wait until the jump cooldown's off. Once again, we're going after the capital, because capitals make me happy. A lot of things make me happy. I'm a very happy person, secretly. I pretend I'm not, but I'm actually very happy. Okay, to make ourselves a construction vessel, we'll be building a gateway here. Let's have a quick look-see. So, we do need those points, and we do hate you. Oh, but you're really good. I was gonna say we could just do undesirables and purge them. If we purge them, that'll be a lot of points towards the crisis, is the thing. But it would also mean... To be fair, we are overcrowding our worlds anyway. You know what? I'm gonna purge you. Now, I'm fairly certain displacement still counts, but I know extermination counts, so we're going to be exterminating the fallen. They've insulted us enough times, it's really their own fault. I've changed my mind, we're going with Wipe Them Out. I don't actually know what happens if you capture a world during Wipe Them Out, but either way, we're going with Wipe Them Out. So, say goodbye to a lot of stations. Oh yeah, I was gonna build another one second. Yeah, can you also please build a gateway in the capital? That would be great. Completely forgot about that. Whoops, the day's only built one gateway, but still. I don't really want too many other worlds anyway, because it'll increase our empire size too much because of our new civic. So let's see what happens. If we end up capturing this, I may end up just going with our lovely Armageddon bombardment, which we've recently got from being the Crisis and just wipe out the worlds instead, the turning them into tomb worlds, which again will give us loads of crisis points. These things just slap at other enemies around. It's just mad. Okay, so we do actually get that. That's not what I want. Good to know. I'll leave this one anyway, but okay, ground forces, stay out of this then for a while, please. That'll be wonderful. We are going to simply bombard these worlds into they are nothing but ash. Construction complete. And don't worry, I have now realised, well, I realised very quickly after seeing that first world, that what we could have done with the first Fallen Empire is simply go straight after the home world here, capture it, and then destroy the rest. But I didn't even really think about that. Oh! Really? You're going to try and go for this? Okay, that's fine. If they become too much of a problem, we can always status quo, and by then we'll have done enough damage that we can just move on to the Conservers, the last of the Fallen Empires, and just bounce straight to those as well. So, no major issues if they do get too far. We're also building a construction vessel here in a second, so we're going to have a warp gate, so we can jump between these three positions anyway. We've made a very creepy triangle. Nope, that's the Hyper Relay. Where did I put the thing? There's the thing. And goodbye to Cradle. Cradle, mother, and brother have all been bombarded. Next we move over to the Preserve, which I feel very mean about, but oh well. And then their final world, which is just a normal little world. And then we have destroyed another empire, another empire rather, which will give us points. Now sadly, destroying populations by bombardment doesn't actually give you a uh, menace. I thought there was a whole separate thing for that, but apparently I'm going mad. And that's a shame. Either way though, we will be getting to Galactic Nemesis after this. Then, we need to make the 5,000 to get to existential threat, and that's the problem. So I think 
I will probably have to capture all the worlds in the conservers and then just deal with those planets. That will slow down our tech massively because of our civic. We can remove the colonies, but it does cost, I think, 200 influence if you completely remove a colony. The last population, I've already done it over here of this world. It cost me a huge amount of influence, which I do need at the moment since I am messing around with my vassals, making our tech more powerful. That being said, if we don't put any of our populations on the world, and we exterminate them, that will turn the colony... Well, it'll remove the colony. So we could just do that instead. A bit more micromanagement, but way less influence cost. I think that's what our goal is then. Then after that, there's not really all that much to do. We're still in a truce with the Watchers. I think I'll start hunting down some of the Leviathans at that point, try and get some bursts of Unity. Unity at the moment is being spent completely on making our worlds more ascended, since we have the Ascensionists' Civic. That makes them incredibly powerful. It also makes them contribute less to our Empire size. That's why our Empire size keeps on bouncing up and down whenever I get enough Unity. So here's where I've really got to decide what I'm doing. So... Obviously, I want to go to war with the Conservers, but the Crisis can spawn in any time after 2300. Which means any year they could spawn in. We do have some fleets back at home. I am building gateways so we can jump back, so I think it's safe to keep attacking. So that's what I'm going to do. Just keep on going forwards. Let's just hope the Crisis is late. I mean, it already is late, so we'll see. I tend to see them spawn in an average of about 20 years? 25 years? Normally about 20... So maybe you have like another five years time, it's hard to say. Oh, please don't run. Are you really yes, that's it, come back. Let's fight. I think I should reach this first. Yep, there we go. Just devastate the station. Now hopefully you're returning to us. Yes, you are lovely to see, lovely to see indeed. This should just be a straight-up victory for us. We have weapons which pretty much counter them, and we also have more fleet power, so in theory, this should be it. But let's just... Just make sure. Oh no, we already have focusing crystals, never mind. I, I'm mostly armor, so let's also increase our armor stats. That's fine. A lot of them being taken out by the Archimeters straight away. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. That should be a load of points for us. Yes, I can now go into Galactic Nemesis. Just gonna take out all the stations now, and then let our ground forces arrive and take out the world. Last world turned to a tomb. The fallen empire has fallen once again. Okay, let's get back over to there. Soon, yep. In fact, now we can declare war and finish off the last, the fallen empire. So that's all three fallen empires completely removed. Ah, they're also a crisis aspirant. Currently at war with everything, though, so I really want you as a vassal, but probably not. So I'm thinking, destroy the fallen empire, then destroy the republic. It turns out exterminating people has made people rather upset. Then perhaps attack the league. Do you have any friends? You don't? Lovely. In fact, I do really want to destroy you, because you're also trying to become the galactic custodian. It seems like people really like you. I really wanted to just destroy worlds, but conquering worlds also gives you points, so it is better even on these low pop worlds to conquer the worlds and then purge the population. So, no bombarding for poor Lathy. Oh, that's cool. This is a dimensional fleet. That's what we can summon, so it seems like the Alliance over here really likes the warp as well. Cool. A slight change of plan. We're going after these fellows first anyway. Wipe them out. Because annoyingly, they are defending half of the empires we want to attack. They do have a few fleets which are over 200k, so we're doing to be somewhat careful with the fleets are moving around. But we can likely status quo fairly quickly after this war starts, so... Yeah, just go after as many worlds as possible, do what we've been doing, just uh, deleting every single population. I'm actually starting to think we're going to purge some of the normal robots as well, and the synthetics. And we'll quickly remove at least a chunk of this empire, which should hopefully give us the last 2,000 we need to start the endgame. Okay, so for more points, what I'm doing now is I'm assimilating the machines into machines like us, and I am purging the other pops. Sadly, I can't simply um, purge the robots. Which is kind of annoying, but that's fine. 
And it's very quickly giving me more... Oh, yeah, even more points than I expected. We're about to hit 9k, which means we're only 1,000 off. I think then this next world will probably be it. These worlds were just absolutely full of people, which I'm now sending back to be altered. So these will all be points as well. After that, I guess, retreat our forces back, because we're about to start ending the galaxy, and... Well, there's no crisis yet, but again, every year it gets more and more likely. Ooh. They have a juggernaut. Oh, good. They're being distracted by the other robots at the moment. They have taken one of our systems or the gateway, which is annoying, but as long as I don't go after the uh, main worlds over here, I don't really care. Let's get the final points. I think it's only fitting that we turn all of our people into the enlightened machines that we are. So every single one of our worlds is now assimilating every single population that wasn't already undergoing the assimilation process. So this will take a while, and for the meantime, it's going to really hurt our economy, but we will be fine overall, we will survive this, and then we'll definitely have enough crisis points. So now all I need to do is force a status quo, which will be very, very soon. I'll just destroy some systems, we'll all get back here, I'll make sure all of our bastions are good to go, I think for the most part they are lovely. Yep, some of them even have ion cannons. They're not the strongest bastions ever, but the thing is they will be able to protect against some small attacks, because once you become the Crisis, pretty much everyone will declare war on us at once, and all we have to do is keep our lovely place here safe while destroying stars. Construction complete. And every one of our choke points has a bastion. Oh. Okay, so we need to get our fleets back and retrofit them. Uh, right now, their weapons are not good against this, but this is the Scourge, and actually... With our repeatables being as good as they are, I mean, just look at how many repeatables we've done here for physics. We're kind of really good against them, actually. Uh, all we need are the Tachyon Lances and to swap some of our weapons to the Plasma Cannons. At the moment, we're doing all the Arc Emitters and everything else. So you know what? Although we are still at war, we're going to start retreating back now to our home territory as soon as possible, please. And I'll start retrofitting them. So right now we're using Archimedes, like I mentioned, because we were going against the Fallen Empires. But instead, we want the Tachyon Lance. We're already using some of the small plasma cannons to swap over this to the large version. Actually, that's kind of all we want. We should, in theory, be able to absolutely melt the Scourge. But again, this is a build which would have been good versus any of the three Crises. I'm not sure if the Scourge is the best we're against. It could have actually been the Contingency we would have been best against. But the Scourge are either the best or the second best. So that's absolutely fine. It's always the Scourge as well. I want to find some other endgame Crises at the moment. I'll still try and de uh, destroy the galaxy. We just have to also defend ourselves, that's all. While all this is going on. Whoa, okay, now we've swapped them over to this, our fleets are looking at 700,000 plus fleet power each. That's pretty scary. One of our stations is beside Gonna change up all of our craft, then as soon as- actually, should we just start the existential crisis now? No, I'd rather this war be over and our stuff be upgraded, then I'll change them up. Okay, there's a fleet. I have destroyed a few of their um, 200k fleets. The Alliance was decently powerful, but we've kind of just scaled to madness now. Half because of our, um, our super favourite vassal, the one giving us minus 50% cost to our physics. Our repeatable is going crazy, despite not being a super powerhouse empire, honestly. In comparison to some of the broken builds you can do, that is. The end is nigh. This day marks the beginning of the final chapter. We now have a plan on how to tear open the barrier between worlds and let the energies of the Shroud, or the Warp, or, you know, all these lovely rifts, become one with our universe, ultimately granting Warp Covenant powers beyond reckoning. So, that means now in our lovely home star, one of our three stars, it should now have the engine, right? The heathens march against oh no, we're a crisis, who would have thought? Uh, where is our engine? The apostates are after our spaceport. Like, we should have a crisis engine, right? There we go, okay. So now, one of our, there we go, one of our stars has now become the engine. 
This will take a remarkable amount of dark matter and will then destroy the galaxy, or uplift us anyway, into one of the rifts we have chosen. We will become the first spiritualist machines. We will become everything and nothing all at once. Now, in the meantime, we are at war with pretty much everyone who isn't our vassal. Do we care about that? No, because they're not warring with our vassals, so we shouldn't have to fight those, which is lovely. We just need to keep our territory safe. So, every bit of territory not directly in this blob over here is connected via gateway, so we can just jump to secure those. We have a gateway in our home system, so we can jump and defend those nice and easily if they ever become under attack. And our own territory has the bastions, although they're not enough to provide unlimited support, they're enough to slow down the enemies. I'm also currently in the process of building some more of these um, hyper drive, so hyper lanes, so we can quite quickly get to them. The ones next to us are a crisis, and they're going to block a lot of enemies from this direction, so shouldn't be too mad. We are, of course, still waiting for the Scourge to arrive. They're going to be a problem when they actually get here. Look at how fast I'm doing repeatables. It is just ridiculous. There we go, the Star Eaters. Okay, so this is how we get our Dark Matter. The Star Eaters are, let's just move them over here are these lovely cubes and they can destroy entire systems. Well, they turn a star into a black hole and by doing so give us a big chunk of dark matter. So to begin with, these are quite weak enemies, aren't they? Uh, okay, so we need to clear those out first. Just send one of our small fleets to clear out all these little ch uh, chunks over here. Then we'll send in our Star Eaters and devour that. Devour all these chunks over here. We'll probably go to war one of the Crisis factions and just take out their stars. And then move on from there. Though saying that, we can go into anyone's territory and destroy their stars. So as long as they're defended with one of our fleets, that should be fine. So actually, I'm going to move one of you over there. Move there, thank you. And I'll send a Guardian fleet with you. And we'll start devouring things over there. We have to upgrade the engine several times before it's finished, but thankfully we can build mega structures incredibly quickly because that's what our empire is good doing. So, oh, the Scourge are here too. Wow, that the enemies are really um, ticked off with that. Where are the Scourge? I must have missed the uh, last event. Coming Storm, Breach Point. Nice and far away. <laughs> The first star for the cleansing. Okay, I've moved the fleet over to our warp areas. This area I've already pretty much gave up, so that's fine. This is the only world I actually care about over here. That's great. We have you there. Oh, that wasn't actually under their control. That's fine, though. Let's use you to take out all of these stations. Since this is a total war, I think it is just obliterating them. And you can move along... Oh, of course, that's not actually a star. Oh, that's a matter decompressor. Well, that's beautiful. We can grab that at least, and I'll just have you follow along and destroy all those stars in the process. So I think it's like 1,000 dark matter per time? I think. Ah, okay, so it's total war in the uh, type of like a purifier, not a crisis, so we are just taking the world, which means I just grabbed a free matter decompressor. Beautiful. The apostates are after our space. The spirits have granted us new wisdom. The apostates are after our space. Port. Beautiful. The second wave of the scourge are here. Ooh, okay. Uh, we need to start moving some fleets over to that portal ASAP. I don't want all of our fleets over there, but let's get a couple. We should be able to really destroy them, honestly. We hard counter them, and we're getting stronger each and every year. We should be able to melt them away. In theory. Now it's going to be one fleet versus one fleet. And honestly, the smaller fleets like this are what I'm more concerned about. It's these tiny ones. They're really nasty. Our strike reference and I'm so much better versus their larger ships. Hopefully our backup will get there in time. I don't think it will, but let's see. Just about. The spirits have granted us new wisdom. 
Okay, already destroying a couple of them before they're in range. They are now in range, though, so that's going to hurt. We do have lots of armor. And armor is what counters them. Defense wise, wonderful. The Scourge melt in our presence. Heretic fleet engaged. The apostates are after our spaceport. Oh, they're all banded together. I didn't see the rest of them. Okay, you lot, please get down here. We're going to have to defend our territory. Maybe I should just build gateways. I am currently just uh, saving a lot of influence for nothing at this point. Basically saving influence for the next game at this point. Meanwhile, I'm about to remove this entire empire. Military station martyred. Well, the station held them back for a while, at least. Definitely caused a lot of ship deaths. Heretic fleet detected. Actually, it's still going. It's not going to win. Okay, it's getting to its hole now. Oh, it, no, the new fleet. Heretic fleet engaged. The spirits have granted us new wisdom. That is crazy. Well done to our citadels. Oh, meanwhile, one of the main Scourge fleets are now here. Might just send some more ships down here, honestly. I've got them spread everywhere at the moment. Fighting the Endgame Crisis and trying to beat the Endgame Crisis is a lot of micromanagement. Okay, you're definitely winning against the one. Ooh, there's another couple. Yeah, might just send some back. My vassals are also here to try and defend against the Scourge, which we are kind of defending the whole galaxy from at this point. Beautiful. Okay, you're here to start taking over as well. No, actually, no, you just stay there, in case they get through. You're going to take those, and then you start taking that. We'll spread and just take out this entire quadrant, then move down and just systematically wipe out all of that. Meanwhile, you've almost finished with all of these. In fact, you kind of have, which is beautiful. Oh, lovely. I can now do the next level of the engine. It'll take a while, but soon we'll have the next level of the engine. And I'll send in you against this empire here, I guess. So I'll move in my fleet. Here's something I need to remember I have once in a while. The Astral Jump. So Astral Jump is the special type of jump which you get from Astral Studies. And it essentially allows you to jump to any of your territory on the map. It's got a very long cooldown, though. So I'm using that right now on my Devourer. There we go. So I've just bounced it all the way from my territory over here to the territory I'm starting to grab over here so we can start devouring all of this. Look at this lovely star-rich section. And remember, anytime there's a planet in the system, the planet gets destroyed as well. And that includes if they're inhabited. That's why we're destroying our whole sections of other empires. Over here, for instance, I think there was a planet here at some point. But now, they're all shattered worlds. We already have 7,000 Dark Matter built up, and we're already about a quarter of the way to the next level of the engine. We have killed so many Scourge at this point. Which is slowing down their advance, which is still good for us. Admittedly, it's like, why do we even bother with that? But if they do start to break through certain areas, it's going to slow down everything we're currently doing. So we've almost completely removed this top section of this empire. This empire is rapidly deteriorating. And we don't have very long now until the engine is in its second stage. In fact, let's just watch it happen. It also took me the longest time to realize this was a mega structure, and it took up a mega structure slot. So when I was trying to build other mega structures, I couldn't figure out what third mega structure I was already building. Oh yeah, the giant death engine in the middle of the galaxy. Well, in the middle of our empire anyway. Okay, we just need one more system destroyed, and then we can start that. You're charging, and you are currently firing. The apostates are after our spaceport. 
Okay. Into stage three we go. It's amazing how long I've played with this new UI and I'm still terrible with it. Next time I think I'll use a mod or just go with the inbuilt editor to change it around. I didn't realise that the mega structure tab was here on the far right and I could have just checked which three mega structures I'm building at any given time. Completely didn't know that, and that's why I kept looking around for the mega structures which I'm actually building, so that was very, very silly of me. So right now, the partial engine is about to enter its second phase. Our, uh, well, I don't mean to look at these two sections, our lovely devourers have taken out whole sections already, and we're still holding the line with the Scourge, although they are starting to break towards this section, so might need to start moving them around soon. So I'm thinking... Keep one of these systems. Oh, there's a gateway. Perfect. Okay, so we'll take this world here. And we'll simply not destroy the world. We might destroy the world, but we won't destroy the system. So we have a second gateway. So, trying to block them off in every direction. So a slight change of plan. We're going to start removing some of the Scourge territory and bombarding those systems instead. Our fleets can handle these incredibly easily, and as long as I keep an eye on the Devourer, we can very quickly destroy all this as well. Uh, this section's becoming a bit of a mess because the robots are now fighting back, and yeah, it's just going to be really annoying. Over here, we will continue to move on the... The ground forces should have landed by now. Yes, they have. Lovely. So our um, warplings here devouring a world from the inside, so we'll keep that as well. I used the word devour too much at the moment. I'm very tired. Well, we're about to see something odd. Our ultimate vassal has just rebelled, but not against us. It kind of became a new empire, so it either... Well, it looks like a rebellion, honestly, whereas normally a chunk of their territory would leave. They left. And as a result, despite it being a victory... Heretic fleet engaged. Victory. The multistellar remains subject of the Warp Covenant. We don't have them. So because of some weird mechanic there, we just lost control of our most important vassal because they rebelled, but they only had one system. It was very weird, to say the least. And I didn't even get the uh, empire it became. On the upside, it doesn't really matter now. We're late enough and we have enough repeatables that yes, it really sucks. We're no longer getting the minus 50%. But we are on a ridiculous amount of repeatables. Our ships are just carving through Scourge and enemies alike. We really don't really have too many concerns. The spirit. A great disturbance. So because of our work with the engine now, we have Sonic Entities spawning around the map. As we break everything apart. We're also really close to getting to the next stage of the engine. I think there's one more after this, which costs like a hundred thousand. I think. Either way, the engine is getting very close. Oh, okay, so it's only 50,000 we need for the final stage. I'm also now in the process of building another Star Eater. We have reached the problem now, the Scourge are kind of jumping everywhere, including in our territory, because SOMEONE opened the L gates. So, we need to clear up this, grab our matter decompressor again, since I've lost that, which is very annoying, but not really a big problem. Now I know I have to defend here, that's not really an issue. And with the other Star Eater, we can now start eating three locations at once, rather than just two. And we're already pretty much halfway to the next level anyway. Finish off that jump. Actually, where am I going to jump? Yeah, I might need to uh, destroy some more Scourge again, so I'll move in my fleets over here again. Meanwhile, you were just devouring all of the League. Actually, you know what? I'm going to send the other Star Eater to the top of the League. One works down, one works up. Annihilating the Empire. The next time I do this, as in destroy the galaxy using the warp, I really need to remember to build more of the Star Eaters. Now we have three things are going so much faster, and I know that it's obvious, but at the same time, I didn't expect it to be so good. I thought some of them have some downtime. Nope, they've all just been busy at work going from star to star. We are now only 4,000 dark matter away from obliterating the galaxy. Well, 4,000 dark matter and a small build time. The final days of the galaxy begin now. And in the meantime, the Sentinels, which spawned in at some point and I didn't realise, just sent us a free fleet. The Sentinels are the anti-Scourge forces which spawn in if the Scourge takes over too much of the galaxy. Don't think they really thought that through, gotta be honest. 
A beginning and an end. We stand on the cusp of godhood. The engine is complete and the vast power of the Shroud lies within our grasp. When the engine is activated, the resulting subspace backlash will detonate every single star in the galaxy. All galactic life will be erased, but by then, we will have safely left this reality behind. For a higher plane of existence where time has no meaning, and where the very fabric of the universe is ours to do with as we please. Destiny 08 And with immense lag! Yep, death of many great leaders there, as the entire galaxy becomes nothing but void. Oh, a single ship survived! And it's a scourge! Oh, of course, any scourge around the black holes might have actually survived. So all that's left is a few stations with nothing to feed on. They'll die eventually of starvation. Either way, we are victorious, and we, of course, are the Warp Covenant. That was a load of fun, and boy, do I have a lot of opinions on the DLC. I might actually make a separate video to discuss them entirely. So this, of course, is my first experience with the DLC. And, of course, being Stellaris, it means I've missed a lot of stuff, and there's more stuff to see. But so far, I've got to be honest, there's not much meat to it, especially for the cost of the DLC. So I wouldn't recommend this certainly to anyone who's getting their very first expansions into Stellaris, definitely. And maybe wait until it's on sale at very least. I was expecting a bit more, but perhaps I've missed that. But I do love the mechanics they've added. I just wish there was more, honestly. So... Hopefully you all enjoyed, give me your opinions of the DLC in the comments below, and I'll be back soon with more Stellaris action, there's loads of mods I really need to cover soon, and honestly loads of other builds I want to test out properly, so expect Stellaris to make a return in 2024, even though we are also now focusing more on games like From the Depths. So thank you so much for watching, if you have enjoyed the video, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff, helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that Stellaris is a series you wish to see continued in the future. And now... I'm gonna go take a nap because this took me over a week to put together.